Welcome to City Council 360. I'm your host, Kim Womack. On this edition of City Council 360, learn more about recent City Council actions, including the change in zoning allowing for development of the former Buttercrust Building in District 2 and sports field improvements in Northwest Corpus Christi. The former Buttercrust Bakery has sat vacant for many years along the Air Street Corridor near Del Mar College. A change of zoning will allow for local developers to renovate the building into a multi-purpose facility including a proposed Mercado, restaurant, and event venue. Briefly, I'd like to uh, uh, let, let each of you know that it, uh, early on, uh, before election process, uh, I, was, I was here at the Planning Commission and just kind of listening in, but uh, had also walked the neighborhood too. This is a building that's been vacant for some time. Uh, it, it is in the heart of District 2. It's between Del Mar College and Six Points. Uh, it is an area that I think, uh, and in having met many of the residents, are very proud of the neighborhood. Uh, the streets are pretty good. They're wide streets. But I, I think that um, in the conversations I had with a lot of the residents, they've said, do something with that building. You know, and then it all brings fond memories of the Buttercrust Bakery and, 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 and people having visited as children. Um, I think we have an opportunity here to uh, open the door for success. One of the largest barriers to the development of the property was the lack of on-site parking size to the large-scale building. Due largely in part to the adoption of the city's sustainability plan, nearby public transportation, and city staff seeking alternative solutions, the developers can now proceed with revitalizing the vacant building. Uh, Mark, why don't we just give them a variance to the parking requirement rather than do a zoning change or a special because permit? A permit expires in one year, and the change in zoning would go with the property, so he would have to do something within a year. I think that's his plan, but the key is if he still needs to work different options, this would allow him an extended period beyond in a year. That's, that's why. And then if the use were changed, you would revert back to the original zoning. The special permit would go away. So that was the reason that we recommended that. I mean, it, it, the building's not going to change. I mean, I, I, I just think that the reason we have variances is for buildings like this, where, I mean, it, it is an older building. It was built with less parking. Uh, no matter what it becomes, it will, it will have to have less parking than the code requires because, you know, we, he'd have, they, to get enough parking to meet code, they'd have to tear down half the neighborhood next to it, uh, and that's not going to happen. And so, uh, I mean, I, w I would just really encourage you guys, when you, when you get issues like this in the future, instead of making them go through a zoning change, just, you know, call, call the Board of Adjustment in for a special meeting and give them the variance that they need to, to get moving. Yes, sir. Um, Mike, you know, great project. Lots of people looked at that building, including me, and I'm, I'm really glad you guys figured out a way to make it work. Um, I will say that this is also part of our sustainability plan, and we invested a lot of time and effort and also with the leadership of that group that worked together as well as um, Jeffrey Pollock with HDR, who did a tremendous job on uh, leading that effort. Um, through this grant that we received, and it's a good fit. And I think regarding the parking, for so many years, now we're finally having a paradigm shift. We used to have the tail wag the dog, and now we're understanding we need to be a lot more open-minded about parking to make sure that we're supporting uh, these projects and not have them be a detriment to kill a project or to control a project. And uh, it's something that coexists well with the neighborhood, and I am very proud of the staff with the way you all worked on this group, I mean, with this group and um, being part of the solution and frankly, just saying, how can we get this done to make this be successful in, in, in sustainability and perpetuity? So well done, Mr. Van. 
The final topic we'll look at today is the expanded use of the Lyondell Bay Cell and Equistar Parks. By leveraging Bond 2008 and Nueces County grant funds, construction of soccer fields and various improvements to existing football fields will help expand youth sports opportunities in Northwest Corpus Christi. I'm Stacy Talbert with the Parks and Recreation Department, Mayor, um, Council Members, Park fans. Um, items 31, 32, <laughs> and 33 are all related. Um, 31 is a license agreement for uh, use of Equistar Park um, located on Haven Drive for a youth soccer program with the Great Western Soccer League. Um, 33 is the same type of agreement with the Noasis County Youth Football League. And so, and 32 is an interlocal agreement for recreational athletic facility improvements at the same park in conjunction with Nueces County um, to use our 2008 bond money earmarked for those two leagues for improvements of their fields and uh, facilities. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for all your hard work. I've enjoyed uh, sitting in meetings with you guys, trying to work through the fine details. I think it's great for the community, especially in my district, uh, moving the the soccer league over from Labani over to there. I think it's going to make a huge difference. It's going to increase their numbers, get the kids involved even more, which is what we ideally we want. Um, the Oasis County Football League is already growing. Um, I know those guys over there pretty well, and they're real excited about it. And I uh, appreciate you guys working with the county, uh, coming up with a good feasible plan that's going to be great for that area and the Lyondale people for the donating of the land and things of that nature. But I think it's just a win-win for the overall community in that area, and uh, you guys were a big part of it. And so as we move forward with this, I just wanted to say thanks. I would just I was a former employee of Equistar and was their public affairs manager and we worked on this project back in 2004 so I just want to take a personal comment it's nice to see that its intended purpose I know there may be some questions about the expenses but I think the intended purpose was for it to be a sports field for the young people in the Northwest and so I'm glad to see that Equistar's motive is being fulfilled here by the city for more information about recent City Council actions or to watch meeting replays, visit www.cctexas.com. Thank you for joining us for this edition of City Council 360.